In this video, I am making a Harry Potter diorama. I bought my first ever sculpting tools and first ever super sculpty specifically for this project. And dove head first into sculpting. The head first. After a very annoying couple of hours, I was left with this. Giving up on sculpting with clay, I started 3D modeling Harry's head instead. Going back and forth between the side and front view to see that the vertices are positioned correctly on the face. Here is going to cover Harry's ears, so I am saving some time skipping modeling the ears entirely. The general shape of the head needs some adjusting, especially the back. Good enough. I modeled the body off camera and printed him out in one piece. Some of the limbs on the model looks very thin, but I'm going to add layers of clothes on top, so I think it's going to look alright. I don't think it's advisable to bake resin in the oven, so I had to use something that cures by time instead. In this case I'm trying out Milliput, a two-part epoxy body to add more details to the print. I found an old stocking of my, uh, of my wife and used it to give the putty that warm itchy sweater texture look that the Quidditch players wear. I also bought liquid green stuff because I needed a thinner layer, but I had hoped for a more liquidy consistency. If I had known I would have just made the rest of the sweater in Millipot. The wrinkles on Harry's tight Quidditch pants are made from a layer of paper towel brushed on with watered down Mod Podge. After legs, the next natural step is his Nimbus. Now Harry needs some priming and paint. The Quidditch uniform design and colors changed throughout the series, but I like this simple and colorful look from the first movie. Red and white with yellow details and leather protective splints. This was a pretty straightforward painting job really, but the eyes, I'm very glad I'm able to show you all the special techniques on how to paint them.
After I wash all over, I go over the whole model with a heavy dry brush of the same color as the base color. It's a bit strange, I think, that Luna Lovegood was able to fix Harry's broken nose on the spot with uh, sixth year magic, but not even Dumbledore can fix his short-sightedness. Now I am mixing up a batch of solid two-part green stuff to sculpt the jersey. The green stuff must have been a bit old because it was almost impossible to mix properly. Since the green stuff didn't mix properly, I had to sand it down a little after it had cured. Then another coat of red paint and 200 coats of yellow paint. Yellow on green is a nightmare. Then some touch-ups and more washes. I glued small amounts of the finest feathers to make his hair look natural at this scale. And no matter how many times I cut his hair, it grew back in the same messy hairdo. That's a joke. To make Harry grip the broom, I have to make some adjustments to his hand. Oh. Harry is finished and I can start making the background. I made sure to make the height of the diorama 9 and 3 quarter, 9 and 3 tenths. I have bought and used wood stains in the past, but this is just a watered down brown acrylic paint and I think it looks great. The banners in the movie are yellowish and red with different patterns and ornaments. I stained an old t-shirt to the yellowish color I wanted and left it to dry overnight. I made a pattern based of clips from the first movie to use as stencils. You can find a link to it in the description if you want to use it in any of your projects. I had to choose to stain with one color and paint with another. And I am not painting with yellow again in this project, so yellow stain and red paint. This was an extremely tedious job, and my fingers cramped up a few times during the process. But I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I nailed the banners to the box, attached Harry and the golden snitch, and with that, it's done.
thank you very much for watching. Uh, please let me know what you think about the build and please consider subscribing.